Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. Recently, I ran across this one feature called Power BI One Lake Integration. And I was like, what is this? So I started doing some research on it. And imagine if you have people like SQL engineers or data scientists or app developers that want to use the models, the semantic models that you create using R or Python or T-SQL. Yeah, they want to consume that data using a different language besides Stacks or Power Query. How can you make that possible? It's quite easy, actually, and I'm gonna show you in this video. So, enough of all this talking, you know what we like to do? Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So I'm gonna start here in my Fabric workspace. It's backed by a Fabric capacity, actually. And the first thing you need to do is you need to go out to your admin portal and search for One Lake integration, and you'll see semantic models can export data to one lake, you need to enable that. That's the very first step, okay? Once you get that done, you head back over to your workspace, you need a semantic model where the storage mode is import. So you take that semantic model, publish it to your workspace, and make sure it's import. Once you do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the settings of your semantic model, scroll down to the bottom, and there's two things you need to do. You need to enable large semantic model storage format. You need to enable that. And then you need to enable one lake integration, okay? And if you wanna learn more about one lake integration, just click this link and it'll take you out to the dock. Then you go back to your workspace and you refresh your model. That's all you need to do is refresh your model. Once the refresh completes, you download the One Lake File Explorer. If you haven't already, you click the download link right here and choose One Lake File Explorer, and then go to your One Lake File Explorer, go to the corresponding workspace, and you'll see a folder with the same name as your semantic model. You go into that folder, go to tables, and then you'll see a folder for each corresponding table. And you can see I have one for internet sales, We'll have incremental refresh set up. And then you can see that it created one for each year because that's just how I have the policy for my incremental refresh configured. When I ran that refresh, it created those parquet files in the form of Delta on my one lake. It was easy. I didn't have to do anything besides, you know, a few configurations at my tenant level and at my semantic model level and then run a refresh and it automatically did this for me. Now, some of you may be thinking, some of you that are like me, performance, optimization, fragmentation, What's going to happen when I run a refresh that has new data? Well, it's not going to append new files, just small little files with the new data. It actually creates a new snapshot and overwrites all the data in any corresponding partition. So that's going to minimize fragmentation and help to optimize the performance of anything that's consuming this data. In addition, eventually, you know, as time goes on, those older files will be removed. So you don't have to worry about, you know, having a bunch of unnecessary files there. That's great. So now it's integrated, it's in the, it's on the one lake. I have these parquet files. What can I do with this? You said that my data scientists and my SQL engineers and my app developers are gonna be, be able to access this data. How do they do that? Let me show you. So we'll head back over to Fabric and see I have two lake houses. So let's say they've started to build a lake house in your organization. So I have this lake house. You can see I have some tables here, but they need a product table. I built some logic in my semantic model that does some flattening and denormalization of this product table to include everything we want, and they haven't replicated that logic. How can I use that table? Well, it's easy. Go here, choose new shortcut, click this, and you see there's my semantic model. So I can actually create a shortcut to the tables in my semantic model once I have the One Lake integration set up. So I go here, I'm gonna choose my product table, click next. I can rename it like any other shortcut if I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and click the check and click create and boom. Here comes my product table from my semantic model. You can see that it has the little paper clip, the little link, whatever you want to call it right there that denotes that it is a shortcut. And now if I want to, I can create a new notebook. And so I write in Python. Since I'm a SQL person, I'm going to switch over to my SQL analytics endpoint. I'm going to write a new query and watch this. Select count from dbl.product. Let's do a quick refresh there's my product table. And then I can run that query, and then you can see it has 606 rows. I can write more complicated queries. You can see right here, if I run this, you'll get the sum 
of sales by product. But that's just the beginning. I can build out my semantic model using those tables that I actually integrated into the one lake. Now there are shortcuts in my lake house. So I can build this another semantic model that's completely in direct lake mode. So if I had an empty warehouse, I could shortcut to all the tables in that semantic model. They would all be in direct lake mode and I can start testing out performance to see if the direct lake mode performs better than the import model. I know I did a video where I was migrating using Python, using Michael's solution, but this is another option that you have. There's so many options in Fabric. So what do you think? You have any questions, comments? Have you tried one lake integration? you know what to do, post it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. If you want to learn more about Fabric, Power BI, all the other workloads in Fabric, that's probably a video flying above my head. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. <laughs>